want to start off by sharing a testimony from a lady in Singapore. And uh, she shares, I am 62 years old, and since childhood, my mother would constantly abuse me with words of accusation and blame due to a personality disorder. As a result, I had been trapped in self-condemnation and depression, and even attempted suicide when I was 15 years old, and I also frequently experienced migraines. I started attending New Creation Church about three years ago, and Pastor Prince's messages on God's love and the gift of righteousness through Christ helped me out of that self-condemnation and depression. Every time I felt burdened and depressed, I would declare that I am the righteousness of God in Christ. The migraines disappeared six months after I started attending New Creation Church, and today I am free from decades of depression. Thank you for your teachings, Pastor Prince. Praise the Lord. And the reason I'm sharing this is because uh, we started a new series uh, on uh, condemnation kills, but the Spirit gives life. And we started last week talking about how this ministry of condemnation, otherwise known as the ministry of death, is actually the Old Testament ministry. Like this lady, you know, uh, because she condemned herself because of the condemnation of her mother and all that, and she has migraine, headaches and all that. A lot of people are in this, in this kind of situation. And they don't even realize it is all because of condemnation. Condemnation on themselves or self-condemnation or condemnation from others, maybe a husband, maybe a wife, maybe a parent, amen? Your parent might be dead, but the condemnation is not. You're still, you're still being burdened by that condemnation, that sense of condemnation. And it all comes from the law. And the Bible says, uh, the Bible calls the law the ministry of condemnation and the ministry of death. Let's go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 3 once again. It says here in verse 6, God has made us sufficient to be ministers of a new covenant, not the old. There is no power. God doesn't supply the power for ministers to become ministers of the old, but ministers of the new covenant, not of the latter, but of the Spirit. The latter here is the law, but the Spirit is grace. Amen? The Spirit, the spirit of grace, but of the Spirit. For the latter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Amen. The next verse tells us, now in the ministry of death, now he calls the, uh, the law the ministry of death. Just now he calls it the latter, now he calls it ministry of death. Calf in letters on stone. This word letters is the same one as verse 6, letter kills. Same word, uh, uh, grammar in uh, Greek, letters. Referring to the law, because only the Ten Commandments, some people say we are not under law in terms of the ceremonial law, in terms of the feast, in terms of uh, uh, those things that are the 613 commandments that uh, is in the law of Moses, but we are still under the Ten Commandments. Actually, it's the opposite. The verse here tells us clearly that we are not under the letters in stone, calf in stone. The only part of the law that was Calf on stone with the finger of God, engraved on stones in the King James, is the Ten Commandments. The ceremonial killing of the sacrificial animals were never carved in stone. Those were written on parchments of skin. Right? Only, only the Ten Commandments was written with the finger of God. Now, if the ministry of death, carved in letters on stone, came with such glory that the Israelites could not gaze at Moses' face because of his glory, which was being brought to an end, will not the ministry of the Spirit have even more glory? For if there was glory in the ministry of condemnation, now He calls the law the ministry of condemnation. So you have the letter that kills, which is the law. Then He calls it the ministry of death. Then now He calls it the ministry of condemnation. Now, if there was glory in the ministry of condemnation, the ministry of righteousness must far exceed seat in glory. And, and the grace ministry is the ministry of righteousness. It confers righteousness as a gift. Amen. So sinful men can stand in the presence of a holy God because of the gift of righteousness. Amen. And we have all Jesus to thank for and, and to give the glory to. Amen. You know who is the last uh, minister of condemnation? You know who is the very last one? John. John the Baptist. The Bible says so. Look at Matthew uh, eleven thirteen. Jesus himself, is, Jesus, these are Jesus' words. Jesus said, for all the prophets and the law prophesied until who? Until who? John. So it ends, the ministry of condemnation ends with John. <laughs> I like it because John's name means God's grace. All the prophets and the, and the law, 
all right, culminates in God's grace, all right? He was the last prophet of judgment. He was the last prophet of uh, condemnation, ministry of condemnation. By the way, the ministry of condemnation in the Old Testament is of God. It was sent to minister condemnation. Amen? But we, we cannot bring this ministry back today in the New Covenant. Does that mean we don't study the Old Covenant? No, we study the Old Covenant, my friend, of course. You know, when we study the Old Covenant, Pastor Prince's sermons, most of my uh, teaching and preaching down to the years, I would safely say more than 50% is from the, from the Old Testament. It's just my calling and, and the ministry that God has given me. But I, the Bible says you shall bring forth the old because of the new, the treasures of the old. You shall bring forth the stores or the treasures of the old because of the new. The way Jesus interpreted the Old Testament, remember on the road of Emmaus to the two discouraged uh, disciples that were walking back to Emmaus, Jesus appeared and Jesus expounded to them the solution to their depression, the solution to their discouragement is for Jesus to expound things in the Scriptures concerning Himself. Now friend, in the Old Testament, it was true that many of the prophets, many, we have some exceptions, but many of the prophets are prophets of ministry of condemnation. Amen. And then the false prophets amongst them were those who tried to preach comfort to the people. Yes. Amen. And God had it so in the Old Testament. But in the New, listen, it says, He who prophesies, this is New Testament now, this is New Testament now. He who prophesies speaks what? Edification, building up, exhortation. Exhortation is calling near and comfort to men. Today, the prophets speak to edification, to exhortation, and to comfort. Not just prophets, but anyone who prophesies. Amen. And prophesy here is not referring to preaching, my friend. It is every believer can prophesy, speak on behalf of God. You know, I think that I, I want to see this increase in our church. You know, during this time of, you can go on, on, a, on Zoom and you can just WhatsApp your friend. You can just contact your friend. You know, whenever you feel like someone comes to your mind, someone comes to your heart, and you just, you feel like, you know, God's, God's light is shining on you. Just tell them, you know, I feel that favor is coming your way. I don't know what you're going through, but, but something good is going to happen to you. You know, it's, in some circles, they'll say that, oh, this is the ministry of people who are uh, easy believism and uh, greasy grace and that kind of thing. Actually, this is the New Testament ministry. It is to edification, it's to exhortation, it's to comfort. And we do not know how many people need to hear that word. And when your word comes in just at the right time, oh, how it lifts people up. The Bible says, exhort one another daily, lest any be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Amen? In other words, every day we need to be encouraging one another. Every day we need to give a word of comfort to someone. My friend, even though you mean well for your family, amen, Above everything else, you want your family to enjoy life more abundant. But if you're under the law, you cannot but minister death to them. Amen. You, you will say things that you don't mean to say and you will act in ways you didn't mean to act. But friend, if you are supply-oriented, again, the first beneficiaries will be your family. When you're under grace, you feel like loving them. You can take it when they have their flesh manifestations. You are able to swallow that up. Amen. And... Uh, Perhaps your family will see Jesus in you and they will see that moral glory and, um, that, that shines out from you. Amen. And you are able to because without, without the grace of God, without being under grace, we cannot shine. Amen. The law kills. It's not only a ministry of condemnation, it's a ministry of death. Amen. But the Spirit gives life. The more we teach grace, the more life is imparted to every cell of your body. Amen. Life is imparted to your soul, to your mind. You feel like your brain comes alive. Amen. All the dead spots in your brain comes alive. And the more you teach life, like this lady I shared just now, the depression goes away. Why? Life swallows up death. Hallelujah. Amen. The Spirit gives life. The Spirit gives life. The Spirit gives life. Condemnation kills. The Spirit gives life. This excerpt is brought to you by josephprince.com. To get the full message, visit josephprince.com.